And today I'm here with the legend in the making, Mr. Malik Papasimbi. I really do believe that people are going to come into our lives regardless of whether we are working on ourselves or we're not. But when we are working on ourselves, we pull the right people into our life. Mr. Malik, where did we meet? Um, we met at the, the FIU, the Farmer's Market. Yeah. I was selling some shea butter, black soap, products for natural skin. Well, natural products for the skin and, and hair. And, and I had some athletic craft that we were talking about. And some clothing. Beyond our initial meeting at the Farmer's Market, I bought one of these, one of the conch shells, one of these... What are they called? Cori shells. Cori shells, not the conch shells. The conch shells are big. Big, conch big shells. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Cori shells are very. They have a very mystical attachment to them in West Africa. Every time you see Cori shells, you can automatically think of West Africa. Yeah. And the Cori shells are used in divination for rituals and prediction of the future, if you believe in that. And. It's also used to repel negative thoughts, negative energy. It wasn't just the initial meeting at the farmer's market that brought me and Malik together. Malik, why do you play the drum for people over at FIU? Me playing at FIU is the same thing I would do if I would go to the beach or to a park yeah. or in my backyard at home. So. I bring I bring the ceremony here to you guys so that you can do therapy because when I play the drum I do therapy for myself yeah. and I'm singing the songs of my ancestors which are some of the songs are 400 years old some of them are even older than that because some songs are kept in the original tones from Africa by singing these songs I connect with this primal energy and then everybody else can feel it. And I've had people, I've had people give me money. I've had people after after playing, saying people have come up to me and donated, donated cash, donated food, drinks while playing or after playing. I've I've had I've had several people tell me after playing, thank you, thank you for the healing, thank you so much. So I believe pe people definitely because the drum is vibration. Yeah. And those vibrations, those rhythms that I'm playing, sometimes they're older than 5,000 years old. So just like we were saying about culture, which is a blueprint that records what's, what works. So this works. And that's why people feel it. But Malik, why do you think it's important to display your culture and play the drums? I mean, I think it's great, but. You know, some people might think that's strange, seeing you always carrying the drum around, seeing you always wearing clothes like this. You know, people are just wearing, everyone's, everyone's wearing the same stuff nowadays. No one's really looking different. So why do you think it's important to really stand out like that? I mean, I, I believe that everything about you is part of your voice, like you can send a message to people doesn't, you don't have to get a megaphone or a microphone, get on a stadium, get on a, a podium and speak. You can do it through your sense of fashion, yeah. through the style of music that you choose to listen to, expression, because that's, that's, that goes into your personality and people, a lot of people are really good at, even if they might like that at home, but when they're in public, they're very good at hiding their their true self from people. Yeah. Because we've been taught since kindergarten to not to be to not be a, a cause of challenge to others. 
even if that challenge might represent or might lead to a more progressive outcome. We've been, ever since our early education, we've been taught to conform, to, to blend in. And which which is not it's not a bad thing in itself, but when you when you become that when it when it when it streams into other areas of your life, that's when that's when it's a problem. So I'd like to end this interview with a greeting, with a powerful phrase that my ancestors used. It's uh, this is not an African word. It's a it's a Taino word. The Taino's were the Native Americans that lived on the island, the whole island of Haiti, before um, the 1400s, 1492, which Christopher Columbus came. And it's Aibobo. Aibobo is, is actually part of a bigger sentence. And the sentence I'm not really sure of in my head, but the, the whole sentence means that I would rather die then be held in bondage. Mm. So, in other words, saying Aibobo to you is like saying, it's like, it's the equi equivalent to I'm Amen or Ashe, like the, the Cubans. And in Cuba and in Nigeria, they say Ashe, which is power to you. Aibobo to you guys. And stay healthy. Learn about different cultures. Or never, never allow boundaries to set between you and other cultures. Blessings to you all. Thanks for watching, YouTube. Wow. We gotta get out of here. These mosquitoes are crazy, man. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>